Welcome to Year in Review of Production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to small cap executives about what's happened in the year up until now, because we're closing out the year, and what to look forward to next year. With us today, needs no introduction, Rob Anson, CEO, Foby AI, trades in Canada under FOBI for our friends in the U.S., F-O-B-I-F. For those new to the story, and maybe it's not going to be a lot of you because it's a year in review, uh, but there always, there's always somebody out there that's new. Uh, and what you need to know about the company is they're a global leader in digital wallet pass technology. Make a note of that because we're going to talk about that. That delivers real-time data analytics, engagement, and venue management through artificial intelligence. They deliver that in stores, stadiums, arenas, hotels, and other large venues around the world. The company had an unbelievable year in terms of milestones. So to go through them all in my intro makes no sense because we're going to go through a lot of them uh, when we're talking to Rob. So Rob, welcome back. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Hopefully you guys had a great Christmas. Yeah, we did, George. Despite three feet of snow that's still here on the ground, we had a great Christmas and very busy and uh, looking forward to the new year. I hear a bunch of Foby investors got to pitch in and buy you a, a snow plow because you don't have a... You don't, you don't have a machine, so you're, you're, you're hand blasting it because you guys aren't supposed to be getting snow where you are. Yeah, I usually don't get snow like this. It's been quite something, so uh, yeah. Well, let's talk about the year in review. Um, and by the way, one thing I think should be very clear that a lot of us forget, including me sometimes, just sometimes, but to put it in perspective, this is year number two of your you know, commercialization stage. Obviously, you guys have been along longer. You've, you've been around longer, R&D, development. But this is year two. Uh, and I think people forget that sometimes when they really want you to rush, you know, to, to win and announce stuff. But before we get into specifics, how do you feel at the end of year two? How do you feel here at the end of 2021 as to how you guys perform this year? Well, it's been a big year for us, of course. I mean, for me, I'm always about process and, and building blocks. And I think this year, you know, there's a few few key things that um, put us in a very strong position for next year, which are fundamentals, of course, realization of revenue, uh, number one. Um, number two, building and securing the team and manpower needed. You know, I've talked a lot about the some of the biggest risks that I see for companies next year and uh, it's staffing. Staffing will be a huge issue. Uh, the cost of staffing is, is something and I'm sure we'll talk about that later as we progress here. But I, I've built a, a very successful and, and global enterprise team. This year we've got incredible talent which enables us to support and a lot of the implementations as we'll see in Q1 and Q2 and um, you know, puts us in a very strong position to now as a service company. Um, you know, we kind of end to end. We try to make it as easy as possible for our customers to onboard. We do all the heavy lifting. A lot of it, of course, is we're not built to do this wrong. No problem. We have a full managed solution. That's paying dividends now for us when we start to look at the contracts that we're signing here in December. That managed service element has uh, been a big part of it. And uh, for us, that's going to be a big story in our revenue line as well. So those are a couple of key things for us. Um, you know, I also look at what I've learned this year. Um, it's a lot of flaws in our system here, George, in the capital market world and investor relation world. And it's something that um, I'm going to fix. I've been working to fix for the last nine months. And uh, there'll be some pretty exciting things released that's going to... Uh, great change let's just leave it at that all right all right you, you piqued my curiosity obviously because i'm in that world so i'd love to hear about it but we'll wait we'll wait till you announce it but um let, let's talk about some of the specifics and i you know i create a bit of a list you and i spoke but and i and i kind of you know uh, cultivate a list here m a that was I, I felt like this is this is a really big year for m a for you uh, what now six acquisitions to date um, how much more m a is coming in and, and, and I got to tell you I love and I will admit that when you first start talking about wallets 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 I don't miss a lot but I missed that at the beginning I thought okay cool you know you got I didn't realize how important of a, uh, of a role wallets were going to play 
Are we going to see a lot more M and A going forward? Is that still a big part of the strategy and and how you grow? Most definitely, huge part. Um, you know, like I said, when I sat with our federal government, what over two years ago, and I guess now two years coming up, um, very little interest in COVID management solutions, full interest in digital identity and digital wall. That accelerated and opened my eyes uh, as to the approach that I needed to take. Obviously, with working very closely with Apple and Google, understanding their roadmap, um, government agendas, of course, as we experience here in Canada, how unfortunately things are done. But um, no, it uh, was something that uh, I made an investment and I, I bet on, and uh, we're about to win big on it. I mean, Can you expand a little bit on when you say the conversation with Google and Apple? Yeah, I mean, for us, when I, I first, you know, I think a big part, George, of, of why we're so powerful and dynamic is the agility of which we have, right? We have various agnostic technologies. We build microservers that connect all these technologies to solve your problem, right? So when I first approached Apple, um, two, two years ago, two and a half years ago, about uh, our IoT device, Foby, and the combination with ID Tech with an NFC reader, I, I was looking just to give uh, you leverage the wallet for a unique and consistent ID. So pre-shopper, your loyalty programs are as strong as their member base, of course. And for us, with uh, the wallet, um, enables us to create cross-community uh, engagement, Cross community, of course, promotions and shop local and support local and all these initiatives. But more importantly, it gave us the, the habitual patterns that we see of George. You know, my goal has always been to action and leverage and everything's real time, of course, as you hear me say. But for me, it's the activation channel that's been missing of the wallet. Of course, I had no idea COVID was coming. But uh, when I started to learn more from Apple and Google as to their roadmap as to what they're going to support through the wallet, uh, hearing from the governments, uh, not just in Canada, but abroad, it's, it's, it's here to stay. The wallet will become everything. As you see, there's yep. a lot of projects coming up here around entry with keys in a hotel, house, cars. Um, you know, I, I'm the prime example. I used to have a big fat wallet, the George Costanza, Costanza. wallet. <laughs> wallet. You know, and then a pocket full of cash. I, I can't tell you the last time other than Vegas where I've had cash in my pocket and I've actually carried a wallet. I store everything in, through my phone, right? So it's, um, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out where the world was going. Uh, I put, you know, the chips on the table and made the right bets. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're a global leader now. In, in wallet pass technology with pass wallet you know there are near 10 million users now it's uh we've seen huge growth in the last two months since the acquisition um and it's here to stay it is part of everything from metaverse as we'll talk about i'm sure nfts digital identity credentials all of these things will be encompassed in the wallet how do you give how do you give comfort to investors because look wallet pass technology for me is a relatively new, fat, quickly evolving, and not many of us know all the angles. How do you give comfort to investors? Say, well, Apple's got a wallet, and you know, Google's got wallets, uh, and they're way bigger than you are, Rob. So they're 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 going to crush you. That's not though, and they don't work that way. First and foremost, um, we get tremendous support from them. Obviously, uh, the speed and agility which we have from a development standpoint, um, believe it or not, is is much quicker than the two you mentioned, which some may call bullshit or hard to believe. But um, no, we get support. It's not what you have, it's what you do with it, right? I mean, that's, that's the biggest piece of the puzzle for us. And, you know, for us, it's not, um, we're not in direct competition with Apple or Google. Um, for us, it's the, the wallet pass business is all around one thing. It's verified credential and identity as I said, alluded to is it's a gateway. Where do you want to take you, George? Is it an airline? Is it a booking? Is it transportation? Points of interest? Is it your passport? 
Is it to start your car, open your hotel room, or store your NFTs? What, what is it, right? That's the agility and unique facets of which uh, we built on top of their platform. So it's very exciting to hear and see what they're supporting. Um, and NFC is one thing that people will learn a lot more about this year, right? And um, near, near field communication. Near, near field communication. Yeah, most people don't quite understand it. They get it from their debit and credit cards of tapping and paying. But you're going to see a lot more of that this year in 2023 as well. And it's going to become the norm. It is standard access and entry. It's here to stay. Last question on that. You're speaking to the entire ecosystem, retailers, loyalty programs, marketing agencies who want to make sure they don't get left out and disintermediated. Um, how, how, how fast do you think, do, do any of us have comprehend how fast digital wallets are going to really become part of our everyday life? Well, we've had a, a record December. I mean, to see what's come this quickly with, with past trader and past wallets and, and now final stages of closing past works. Um, it, it's amazing to see how fast it, it's becoming a necessity, George. I mean, here we are, for God's sakes, we're, what are we, two years? Now we're all going back into lockdown again. Like, it's, it's really, it's like Groundhog, you know, Groundhog Day, each and every day. Nothing's changing. Businesses now are starting to change because it's necessity. They need to have the tools to remain open, right? But there's no business. It's simple economics. No customers, no retail, no, no money, right? And I think for us, it's uh, we've <coughs> seen a huge opportunity now with the agencies. CPGs and the agencies will become huge front and center story for us in Q1. Um, huge part of the business now because they have all the funds and all the monies to deploy. And guess what they're looking for? They're looking for the bridge between online in-store and mobile commerce, and now the wallet. So cupos will be a huge story for us. Past creator and the past land will be big, big mix of this because it's the perfect storm now. You've got the old legacy systems, you've got today's, and you've got the next evolution of the wallet. Very, very powerful. And this has put us in huge positions now. Like I said, it's been our biggest month ever. Uh, very, very excited for what's ahead this year. And when you say biggest month ever, do you mean specifically just to the wallet side of the business or overall? No, everything. Contracts, like contracts and, and not, not small. It's either big, big enterprise deals that uh, we've been negotiating. I've been still negotiating all break. Um, it's going to be very, very exciting to see uh, turn a few heads and, and all these people that, uh, you know, yap a lot to me about uh, Bunch of baloney and this and that. Uh, you know, we're gonna eat, eat a lot of crow this year. So, you know, I was gonna talk about 2022 further down, but since you said that, I almost got a, you know, I got a segue right there into it right now, which is um, clearly 20. The pipeline is what bigger than ever. You're signing the. Are we gonna start seeing a lot of deals actually being announced in January? And, and you've, by the way, you, we've seen deals being announced, which is great. Yeah. But I guess some people wait for those big whoppers. There's there's a lot of uh, there's certain yeah there's there's deals that have got bigger than they were originally. That uh, you know as I said budgets became an issue. Um, building additional tech stack and support um, became an ask, and uh, we'll we'll see some of the names of the past come roll out here in uh, Q1, and uh, there'll be some other pretty. Pretty big names that, um, you know, we, we've, you know, Shopify, Lightspeed, all of these groups that uh, we've been working with. Janum, Janum is a huge, exciting opportunity for us. A very big story for us in uh, Q1 of this year when we return. Um, but no, for me, it's, it's, I look at it as it's all steps, right? It's all about infrastructure and support. You get big, too big, too fast on air, you, you fall down and you're done. We have all the tools in the toolbox. What do you want to build us? What do you want us to build you, George? Right? It's a luxury that I have now that there isn't a project that we can't do 
that we can't turn in a matter of days, right? We've got some repeat contracts now with in Vegas and other things that uh, bode well for us and continue to gain respect and credibility. Um, all net development down there is underway and we're playing a huge part in that. That's, that's the full gamut of technologies there. So very, very excited for the year ahead, of course. Give us a sense, if you can, of the profile, the kind of customers you're, 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 you're now talking to and potential customers, and even the ones that you think are signing or in the process of signing. I know you can't be specific, obviously. I'd love you to, but I can't ask you to be specific. But what should we know about the profile then of the kind of company? Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you past GeorgeCom now? Um, yeah, I, I think you're let George Com go, but you passed George Com, and now you're moving on to global enterprise. Part of our part of the conscious dec decision that I made, George, was that um, you know about six months ago, we got to step back a bit because it's it's easy to get caught up in you know the shiny ball syndrome, as they say, right? Oh, look at this opportunity here. These enterprise deals take, you know, typically you ask anyone who's a, a senior business development guy, you're like 24 to 30 months, right? We've, we've seen some of this expedited, of course, because of necessity. But I think where I made a conscious decision and it's paid off now and you see it in the, the revenue numbers now starting to grow is you have to find balance. Everyone loves to, you know, hit the grand slam upper deck, right? But it's the singles and the doubles and like money ball, right? That build the base that enable you to chase the enterprise deals. Because, you know, if I had put all my, you know, eggs into just solely phobie and solely into chasing enterprise deals, we wouldn't be here today, right? You have to shift, you have to evolve. And uh, I think that's one of my biggest attributes that I brought here is understanding the long term vision but understanding what, how I can take, you know, an acquisition here and acquisition there to fulfill the bigger ask for some of these projects. And then more importantly, provide extreme value in instant re in revenue. And, and speaking of revenue, I mean, it was a nice, nice announcement there at the end of November with your Q1 numbers where I'm going to read it off here. Revenue increased from 150, I'm just rounding, uh, to just under 600. So it's about a 290, let's call it 300% increase uh, in revenue just for the quarter. Um, I know you can't give projections, obviously, but is that a, was that an outlier quarter where, all right, we just had a bunch of deals, you know, come in at that time, or should we be expecting, you know, more, yeah. of, more of the same? Well, it's like I've said, right? You're going to start to see the, the snowball go down the hill, right? We had our first reporting, what was it, three quarters ago, increase, increase, multiples, right? And that's that's what I meant about finding balance, right? Enables us to slowly increase each quarter as we go. And uh, this would be a record year for us. It's very exciting because I think the balance sheet is the first thing as well that um, for some reason, I guess, get asked a lot. I don't quite get it, but... You know, when are you doing a raise? When are you doing a raise? Well, we no need to do a raise right now. We've got a lot of money in the till. Ballpark, um, what's the balance sheet like? I know, and you can't give us the bank balance today because you have to stick to disclosure laws and talk about the balance sheet at the end of the first quarter. But, you know, what's the ballpark? Not even in terms of number, but how much runway do you have on, the, on your balance sheet? Because that is important. And I can see why some people, you ask Devil's Advocate, Rob, because the great news is everyone's tracking your hiring. Right. Everyone's tracking the jobs, you know, the job postings, but you're not at, you're not you're not looking for George and Tom. We're twelve dollar an hour guys. You're you're bringing some big tech people. Um, yeah. do you, have, you know, how much runway do you have right now? That, that's a great point. And I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the things I got grilled on through our financials. Right. Um, share based compensation. Right. It's just the reason why the options we increased our option. Um, for this year, in our era, it was passed in our AGM. Is when I say that, um, you know, of course, I always get called out and on everything I do, but um, when you start to look at, as I mentioned, the cost of hiring talent, um, 
you know, you're, I'm looking, I've been looking for a product person for six months, right? Um, you know, take a guess what it costs for someone who's senior product person. For, for what you guys are doing, I would say, uh, I would probably think 250, 300,000 by now. Yep. 300k 325,000 right and that's something that a couple of years ago you know buck 50 buck 75 you get some pretty good people and yeah so this is this is part of it that um you know is is a little uh, i don't i just don't think the shareholders quite understand because to be able to compete against amazon and google and all of these companies i mean it's like the real estate market you're getting 30 offers i mean i've had so, so many people that I was so excited about, I thought we're signing that day, right? We made an incredibly strong offer on cash and our benefit program is, is tremendous. And, and of course the options um, to find out that I lost again, right? Because they went to Amazon because they got a hundred thousand dollars signing bonus, right? So like I said, for me, it's, you know, Tamer's done an amazing job of building our team. You know, recruiters is a huge cost nowadays huge cost we he's tamer alone has saved us nearly five hundred thousand dollars this year by hiring and doing the legwork internally on his own so it's it's um like i said we are going to leverage the hiring that we have done but understanding the numbers when the people look at the burn rate right oh how can you be so high share based compensation played played a part of that right in the number. So. Yeah. I don't think people, like I said, and then you get the guys that know everything they think and, you know, start all the rumors of this and that. And it's just nonsense, right? Like but in said, fairness, Rob, you know what? I think those are the outliers too. There, you know, look, I've been in this business for, I mean, 25 years come April. And there's always a small subsect of investors or critics, whatever you want to call them, that's only gotten stronger with social media expanding. You got Twitter, Discord, you got how many channels? Right. Right, where somebody can just lay into you. But I think in all fairness, that's a small, it's a small outlier. And most investors really believe in what you're doing and what you're building. And I don't, so, you know, don't, don't listen too much to, to the critics because this, this all they're always gonna be around. No matter well, what. I, I could I could give a rat's ass what uh, people say anyways. I mean, for me, I I I find hard pressed to find someone who works harder than I did. Um, for me, it's always, you know, my staff in, is my family, you know, I, and when I, when I think the biggest thing for me is we have tremendous shareholder support. I mean, I get inundated, as I've said for, you know, two years now with amazing messages and, and emails and the odd phone call. And I, I love actually the, the critics, George, because for me, that's one, one, one of my biggest things when I hire is I don't want, uh, you know, the whole world here is unicorns and roses. And we always look at each and every element of our business and look at and critique it. Why are we doing this? How can we do this better, more efficient? It's the only way you progress. So I love all the, the critics. I mean, for me, I, I'm very accessible. I, I always make myself accessible because most of the time, George, People just don't understand, right? So you have a simple conversation. Instead of going on the boards or whatever you're trying to do or your agenda, give me a show, right? Nine out of 10 times, of course, you know that they don't, they don't want to talk to you in person, but that's fine. They're paid to be there. And this is one of the things I met, said that our system's broken and, and you know, we're about to fix it. There's a lot of, um, a lot of things are going to change this year. Okay, I'm looking forward to that, but and I know we can't get we can't get more out of you. Speaking of the team you have brought on and the talent you have brought on, uh, you guys have you know really done a number with your integrations and reseller agreements, and obviously that's happening because Shopify, Lightspeed, Janam, they love your product, right? I mean, is that is that is that oversimplifying it? Or is that a case of you just wouldn't have these kind of integrations? I think it's, like I said, to me, it's um, that validation, you know, to, to see how quickly 
that these companies, I mean, they're reaching out to us. I mean, this isn't, um, you know, me flagging and chasing them down. They're actually reaching out to us. Really? I would have thought it was you. I, I would have thought naturally it's you call them up and say, hey, I want to integrate with you, Shopify, Lightspeed. I want to. Yeah, early days, yes, of course. But now, like I said, we, we have some pretty big visibility. Um, but more importantly, a lot of these pilots and stuff that we did do gained us a lot of credibility. I mean, my, my thing that I'm very, you know, very proud of is when I hear how easy it is to work with you guys, right? The level of support and service, anyone can sell something. You build the relationship and trust and the referral on the after, after product care, right? And we, we, Ian's built a great team for that. And uh, it's something for me that I'm most proud of is how easy it is to work with you guys. I love hearing that. And speaking of pilots, that gave you a lot of that credibility you're talking about. Can we talk about, uh, you probably can't be specific on case by case basis, but you've announced some pretty good pilots uh, that got a lot of people excited and enthusiastic. Uh, again, more third-party credibility. Uh, yep. what, what are, what's generally speaking, what, what are the, what's the status of these, of these pilots? Cause I'm presuming if your pilot with George Com had fallen apart, uh, you'd announce it and say, "Hey, we announced yeah. the pilot with George Com, but to you know, to, to for 500 of his locations didn't work out. Pilot's done. So, is that a safe yeah. assumption? And and if so, then how well are they going? And when are we going to see a couple of these? Because people have to ask me all the time on the street, George, what's going on? That pilot, that pilot. I, said, I don't know. Rob says that they're going great. Um, yeah. What can you no. tell us about about them? It's, it's, it's good timing for us. Like I said, it's, it's a new year. It's got new budgets. Um, you've seen some of the other announcements that we've put out that are part of the integration stack of these other organizations. SOC 2 was a huge part of what we needed to do as well. Explain um, to people what SOC 2 is, by the way, because that's going to go right over the heads of 95% of people. It's, it's, it's like you and I spoke about earlier. It's uh, an audit to ensure the highest level of security for the operation, not just from the data, of course, which is cybersecurity, but uh, everything from um, website to social to email, the whole business operation is audited. Um, you know, we spend about like 3,000 hours. Um, it's a huge, huge task. And it's put us now, um, you know, there's a lot of big contracts we weren't able to get last year, uh, government related, based on that. We didn't have our SOC 2. Um, this has put us in a whole new realm now, especially with the TELUS front. Um, it's really escalated a lot of these opportunities. So we'll see some of these names that uh, from the past come forward here. And uh, part of the reason why I'm so confident and not too bothered by some of the fluctuations right now in share price. Yeah, and by the way, share price, I'm just going to chime in. Share price doesn't determine the quality of the business. But, and that's, by the way, that's on both sides. We've seen some companies, George Com, have a crazy share price and a crazy market cap and they don't really have a business. We all see it and say, what's going on over there? And then we see some great companies, ABC Widgets, that don't have a share price that we think is reflective of what's going on. And by the way, Warren Buffett created the biggest empire on the planet by buying shares in companies that were undervalued. Right? It happens all the time. And I'm not saying that Fulby's undervalued because I can't say that. I can't give financial advice. But um, you know, since you kind of mentioned that, it's not, it's not really a reflection of the business. It's a reflection of what investors think. That's the biggest thing like with, with my team, of course, right? I mean, I don't get caught up in it. Um, you know, for some reason, people think I control the share price, which I wish I did. Um, but no, I don't, obviously. Um, but no, for us, it's always, the message is always keep your head on what you're doing each and every day, the end of the week, end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year. If you look back last year, where we are today, George, we're a completely different company, like nine day, right? Nine day. And that's, that's the fruits, um, you know, the effort. And I said, I don't believe in luck. Luck is about the, the work and preparation that you've done before that event that puts you in this situation to succeed. And that's one thing that uh, I can't say I, I have done well. 
is I position this very well throughout the year and uh, already done so for next year. So very excited to see what lies ahead. Well, when we were talking last year during the year review, you said that the company would the company would be several magnitudes better than it was last year because last year we were all really excited about what was going on. Yeah. Tell us about where you are on that measurement. You know, uh, and I'm not talking share price. I'm talking about the product stack, the yeah. pipeline, the third party validation the opportunities that are, are, are in front of you, how much did, did you get, did you meet, surpass, or did you um, underperform your expectations as to where the company would be? I think there's, there, yeah, there's a couple parts in that. I mean, yeah, I, I said, you know, the first year was crawl, walk, right? Last year, and now this year it's run. And to your point, we're in our second year here, you know, we've, this is walk here. Go find me another company that's, you know, small cap company that's done what we've done in, in two years here, right? Not just, I mean, it's easy to get flash and, you know, in a pan, but for us, we're building a long-term, sustainable, viable business. And, you know, I've said from day one, this won't be a trade. Um, this is about investment. And we've shown the growth. I mean, we're, you know, the whole re relaunch of, you know, no more loop insights. Now it's full AI because we've evolved through acquisition, through talent, right? Of course. Um, so now this is full on run now. And this is great because we've got a balance sheet to do so. I've got the hands that can help build, continue to run. Um, very exciting for me. I mean, I never had this luxury before, right? You're, uh, every, um, you know, startup company is bootstrapped on, you know, what they have for resources and how do we get, you know, to next quarter and when do we raise money and how do we raise money? And, you know, I, I can now just focus on the business and that's what's enabled me to, you know, take it to a whole new level this year. Well, one thing that seems to be really different about the company that I like is last year at this time, you're predominantly a great Canadian tech story with some exposure in the U S specifically sports, right? So, Country ride, Canada, and then uh, a small but important vertical in, in the U.S. Now it seems like the company's gone real international. You have a, a major retailer in Iceland. I know it's a small country, but it's Iceland. <laughs> Where did we get that? The acquisitions out of Europe and, and the customer roles that those acquisitions bring. Um, is, is there a corner of the world that doesn't know about Phoebe, given the relationships you've got, even, you know, even NTT? Right. Yeah. Out of out of out of, yeah. out of Japan. Is there a part of the world that isn't exposed to phobia now? That's a big part of my focus and has been the last three months is APAC. Um, big, big focus. Tremendous opportunity for us. And I think a lot of it, George, is um, comes by way of circumstance. Right. There's, you know, we we're so close to everything. And I think, you know, at some points to the fault of our investors is. I mean, they're like private investigators, right? They got to find the inside scoop and the inside track and buzz, which is great. But when you start to look at the global opportunity, we're way ahead in North America than 75, 80% of the world, right? So when I started to discover some of the deficiencies and challenges that these large enterprise groups are having just around data itself, um, let alone the wallets and, and the rest of it, uh, came very interest to me of, of next year and we've um, put a lot of rods in the water and they're uh, starting to go off so it's uh, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun this year in Asia and when I start to look at uh, some of the partnership opportunities I think when you, you look at acquisition George too um, it's been a very hard couple of years for private companies uh, raising capital is extremely difficult right now um, I probably get three or four groups every day that reach out, introducing their company, looking for investment. Um, there's some huge opportunities out there that, um, yeah, you, know, you don't want to invest, you want to acquire, right? I, I mean, it's always for me, we, we, you know, partner, we build or we buy. And, and for us, we look at, you know, undervalued depreciated assets, I guess you could say, 
um, that have great synergies to our story and plug into our tech stack that uh, bring revenue. And when I look at where they fall in the chain, how can I get to a five to 10 X multiple of that revenue? And is that possible? And the answer is yes. You see how fast we can move. Have you gotten to the point, this is more of a, a theory kind of question. Have you gotten to a point where, because shareholders don't understand, a lot, a lot of small cap investors don't understand that they can love Phoebe and they can believe in it. But George, the head of data at some big enterprise, he's got to make sure he keeps his job and doesn't take a bet on you, which means he's got to evaluate you, but he's going to be really ultra careful, put you through a hundred hoops you got to jump through yeah. to make sure it's bulletproof. Are you past that point now? Or are you still at that yeah. point where you're still auditioning? People like, Rob, we like your technology. looks really good. Man, if it really proves itself, you can help us out here. But we need to really take a hard, long, hard look at you. Or are you at that point where you're walking to meetings and saying, here's what I got. Here's what we can do for you. And, and they don't yeah. have to worry about losing their jobs. No, that, that's just it. And that's why I said why we've had a record December, why this is going to be a transformative year for us this year. Um, is based on that, right? We have the credibility. Um, you know, I think that's the plays the biggest part now, George. Technology, as I said before, has no value unless it solves a fundamental problem. Um, that's what we do, we solve problems, right? Quickly qualify what, what your sense of urgency is, your budget is, your timing, and then on to the next. It's a numbers game. And thankfully now, you know, these conversations, there is no, hey, can you do a 90-day pilot, right? It's, no, no, this is what we do. This is what it costs. Are you in or you out? And like I said, the, we've got these groups calling us now, which is very exciting because for me, I'm always been about third-party validation. Um, and to see, like I said, there's some pretty exciting things that are, are, are going to come. And it's a result of their customers asking for FOBI, right? So hence why they pick up the phone and reach out to me is that they're getting demand and asked from their existing customer base, right? And there's global opportunities that uh, for us, it's, that's when you know you've done something right. Um, 2021 was walk year, 2022 is run year. Give a, if you can, can you give investors a sense for, you know, run means sprint and you've got two kinds of sprinters. You got Usain Bolt, who comes out of the comes out of the blocks kind of slow because of his size, but once he hits that 50 meter mark, he's a rocket. He, you know, he ends it off, it blows by everybody. And you've got other sprinters who are fast out of the blocks and just maintain that, you know, for, how do you, if if that's a good can if that's a good way to analogize it, or if not, tell me you got another analogy, but what should investors kind of be expecting out of and what are you expecting out of Foley? Well, I think we've kind of had two false starts with so much anticipation and eagerness over the break here with our team. We've got so much, uh, like I said, we're teams are working full through the break. I mean, they took two days off. That's it. Um, there's just so much going on, George. And, you know, I, I push harder than anyone trying to get things nailed down. And, you know, the lawyers have been tremendous. Our, our great legal team at MLT Aikens has been amazing this Christmas uh, with all the work they've done for us. So no, I think, like I said, for us, it's straight out of the gate. This will be a record year for us, record quarter. Um, I think you're, people are gonna see not just the, um, not just the enterprise deals, of course, but they're gonna see where we fit into a lot of the ecosystem that I've spoken about. I think that's gonna be the aha moment for people to go, wow, right? That's the largest group out there in, in their space. And they've just, you know, done this deal with them. Man, that's exciting. I wish, I wish there was a way I could hypnotize you over Zoom uh, to give us more detail, but can't do right. that. So. I'm going to have to wait long. Like I said, for us, there's, uh, it, it's going to be run. Um, you know, like I said, there's, there's so many opportunities today that uh, need to be solved. Um, you know, we live here and I can't believe we're still going through the same stuff with COVID. Um, you know, like I said earlier to you, I hope this isn't our new life. 
it is a moving because you know everyone's had enough um you know i i'm not going to get in the political side of who this and that but there needs to be big change and big change is coming well what are you hearing from the enterprises from everybody are they saying are they i, I presume they've got to be at a point they're saying we don't know what the future holds we can hope but we don't know but you know what to hell with it we're going to yeah. be ready so That's, that we don't have to this whole like binary shut down open up yeah. shut down open up seems like come on there got to be smarter people in this world who are going to say no no we're not doing that anymore we're we're going to find a way to smooth it out smoothen this out and find a way to stay open with technology for sure it is i mean you know they 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 you know Canada, we talk a lot about science and data-driven decisions. And quite honestly, it's uh, yes. uh, the data they're looking at or what science they're reading. But, uh, they're, you know, it's, it's to, I've never, ever seen, you know, obviously I speak to, you know, clients and people over the world, across the world. And. You know, I've never heard so much, uh, so many disparaging remarks around local government and policymakers and whatnot. Um, I think part of it too, from a government level, George, is they don't know what's available and what's out there, right? I think that's the biggest, biggest part of it. They live in a bubble, right? They've got two contractors that do everything for them. This is the way we've done everything. This is the way we build our policies. I think what's been exciting the last couple months now is they're now exploring to see how can we be the first to implement something, which is exciting because to your earlier comment, nobody likes to be first. Everyone wants to ensure they don't lose their job, things go wrong. And that's why you, you see so many legacy, not just decisions and, and systems in place. That's what's, what it all pertains to. Nobody likes change, right? But change, but change got to be coming. If if I'm George Com Retail and I've got 300 locations, there's yeah. got to come a point where I say I can no, I can no longer listen to Prime Minister such and such, President such and such, Governor, Premier. I'm going to implement technology. It's going to take me outside of that bubble. Say, hey, I comply, and here's why. Are we at that point? Because devil's yeah. advocate, or is are these shutdowns causing a problem for for short term? No. Is this it is causing a disturbance because George Combs says, hey, Rob, let's wait another month to see how this is going to shake out. No, as I said before, we've seen 20 years of digital transformation in the last two years. This is only going to accelerate everything even further, right? The more people are forced to become educated with the wallet, right? If you want to travel, you got to use your, you know, your health passport, which is QR codes. If you want to go to a restaurant, scan a QR code. This has been great because it's forced change. You're going to have, like we, we've experienced here the last three months, George, you've got retailers and organizations that are, are looking beyond, right? They're looking for an embracing technology. You've got other groups that are caught up in the drama and the stress of how do I keep my door open? Those, those, those retailers will become completely irrelevant, one, because of technology, and two, because of um, the business gonna, is going to shut down. And the great thing is the consumers are open to it too, right? They're like, hell with it. I'll have a wall. I'll give you what you need so I can live my life normally again. George, there, you're you're going to see a lot of new exciting products that we launch here in, in coming months. And it, it fits so well with the timing because there's no such thing as loyalty anymore, right? I mean, you know, even here, I, I've been in a snowstorm for four days and three feet of snow. and no one's been able to get out. Well, you know, have it delivered to your home, right? It just amazes me that people that they're, they're still stuck in the, you know, back in the 1990s, for God's sakes, a lot of these people. So this technology is one thing. You either embrace it or you become completely relevant. And the next few years, <clears throat> you're going to see a huge, huge shift in technology and winners and losers. And it's in the best interest of the entire ecosystem from cpgs to venues to retailers because at the same time they just better understand their customer once the, the, the problem now like i've done a lot of traveling in the last three months right once they get it right it'll completely change the experience right now it's not very good of course a lot of challenges with staffing and 
technology that doesn't integrate. But once, you know, in the next three to five years, once this is all in sync, life becomes so much more efficient and so much more convenient. And it's like anything. You either, you know, get in at ground floor or you're the guy stuck by at the top because you didn't believe it was going to change. I can guarantee you one thing, the digital wallet um, is not going anywhere. Everything we do in life in the next years come will be all built on that wall. How well yeah. positioned are you for that? I know you're really well positioned, but do you still have missing pieces? You don't have to tell us what missing pieces there are, but do you have missing pieces? You're saying, George, you're 94% positioned, but we still need X, Y, and Z, or are you, yeah. are you set? We're, we're 100% set. It's, it's, the, it's the infrastructure, as I said. What we do with that now is the fun part. And it's just that, because we can go from conversation to conversation, opportunity. Are you willing to do that? Are you wanting to do this today? Yes, great. Here's a contract. Matter of days, we can turn around and implement that thing. So it gets exciting for our sales team now, because like I said, you don't have to go chase business. We're, we're turning down business because we're looking at how does it affect our, our business from a revenue standpoint? When does it affect it, right? This is what I mean about finding balance, right? We're taking that balanced approach to everything that we're doing this year and uh, 2023 for sure. We'll continue to push very, very hard on M&A. Um, like I said, I see us as a, a SaaS service and a high growth company and we're just starting. So that's the fun part to me. Last point, based on what you just said there, sales pipelines, right, uh, have, a, a, it's like a funnel and you've got everyone at different stages. Is it fair to say that a lot more of your pipeline is towards the end now because they just want to implement yeah. technology and get going so they're no longer kind of dancing, evaluating, but they're at the point. Like in other words, I guess the best question, maybe the easiest question I should have asked is, how's your sales cycle what's the sales cycle time been reduced like? Like I remember there's a time oh, when a client would be six months and then it became you know, six days, right? Uh, what is, what is, what's your. We've seen, time? we've seen a few enterprise deals that like I said, take typically 24 to 30 months. Um, you know, we're three months, you know, so that just shows you one that you have something of value to you right? They understand the necessity for it uh, and want to go. You know, I'm also big on the model of licensing where we can get an annualized license for various platforms that we build. And then we also get percentage of rev shares as they deploy. It's a very strong model for us as well. So when you look at international global growth, as you mentioned, George, that's uh, where chips are nicely set up. Buddy, congratulations on the great 2021. Uh, can't wait for 2022 based on the conversation we've had. I'll leave the last word to you because we could talk for another hour easily, but I think we've covered everything and really well, which uh, by the way, is there anything that we haven't covered? Maybe you guys say, George, you know what? We didn't get a chance to talk about this. No, I think like I said, no, I mean, we could talk for hours, but um, no, I think like I said, for us, it's, I've always been about process. Um, you know, we've built the right uh, foundation and, and architecture here for to support the global growth. Uh, we have tremendous, you know, support from our, our shareholders and uh, we've got a tremendous team and uh, I, I couldn't be more happier than I am to uh, hit January 4th running and Santa brought me a new pair of shoes for, for the new year. So. Oh, okay. Love it. Can't wait. Happy New Year to you, the Phoebe team, your family, and uh, and to all your shareholders and all my fellow shareholders. And can't wait for January 4th, January and Q1 to see what, to, to see what's going to evolve, my friend. For sure. Yeah, it's going to be a transformative year of change um, and disruption and uh, a whole lot of, wow, I didn't see that coming. I'm going to write that down as soon as we're done. Put that in the Twitter alert for everybody. Wow, yeah. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, no, I just want to thank our shareholders, uh, my staff and team, family, our board of directors, of course, 
and uh, all those guys on the boards that uh, you alluded to that sent me stuff and messages and death threats and the whole nine yards. Uh, we're not going anywhere, so bring it on. And uh, we're uh, eating a lot of crew here, so. Can't wait until we all celebrating at the Allnet Resort yeah. uh, as with our Foby wallets. Uh, that gives us a discount to stay there. And we have, I don't know, annual general meetings, semi-annual meetups, group group ups. That, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah, there's going to be some events, the interactive events, localized regional events this year for uh, shareholder interaction and whatnot. But uh, there's going to be a lot of great things that we've been working on that we'll be launching here in, in the next bit. So, um, yeah, stay tuned, as I say, George. We're staying tuned, Rob. Thanks for having. A, thanks for being with us. I know how busy your days are. I think we've taken about a, close to an hour to to do this, and and I, not only do I appreciate it, but more importantly, all the shareholders appreciate it because it, they have a fireside chat with you. And, and thanks for joining us, man. Thanks, man. Year three Bye. is going to be. What's that? Year three is going to be fun. Can't wait for it. And thanks everyone at home. Kind of bared with me. I'm sorry today. I've been a little bit of the weather, so cough and sneezing a little bit. Rob carried me greatly. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for a great 2021. Happy New Year to you, all your families. Uh, safe, happy, prosperous 2022. Can't wait to see you all again. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey, guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and then leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel so you don't ever miss another great Agoracom small cap video.